Yeah, boy, that's how you start a season. Welcome to the VMX Show, Season 4, Episode 1. Oh, I've been longing to say that. It's been five long weeks, and I know I said it would be six weeks, but um, I decided to push it up. I decided to do it this week rather than next week, to much to the delight of people who like the VMX Show, mostly due to the fact that uh, next week will be post-E3, and I didn't want to, you know, there's going to be a lot to talk about post E3 and that plus all the stuff I have to talk about already. It's just too much for one show. So I wanted to do at least one show before E3. E3 starts tomorrow. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm, I'm especially uh, going to be watching Nintendo's press conference live um, on the internet because we want to see what's going on there with Project Cafe and everything. So, you know, that'll be pretty cool. I got a great show for you. I got your questions and comments. I got an interview uh, with one of my fans named Charmaine. I believe her YouTube name is ChibiKyo7 or something like that. She'll say it in the interview. She came by uh, earlier to do an interview, so that's going to be pretty cool. And, of course, we have the news, the sales figures, all that shit. Not. Oh, oh, the song that started off. Wasn't that a great song? That was from E7 on the PlayStation Portable. The only system where you can get E7. 
So, you know, you might want to look into that, non-PSP users. But anyway, let me get your questions and comments now. It's a bit lighter than usual for questions and comments because obviously a lot of people didn't feel the need to leave uh, questions on the season finale that um, wouldn't be read until, you know, six weeks later, although it turned out to be five weeks. But I did get some questions and comments. So let's read them out. Razaraf92 asks, Is it gay if it's in a three-way? Man, I don't remember what I was talking about in the last episode that made that question come to me. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe he's just weird, but I probably was talking about something. Um, I used to have a friend who said it's only gay if balls touch, but I'm pretty sure he was gay anyway, so I think he was just, I don't know, like, I also knew another guy who said, you know, like, it's not gay if another dude, like, goes down on you. He says, nothing gay about getting your dick sucked. I know some weird people. Not that I got anything against, you know, gay people or whatnot, but if you're doing something gay, then that's gay. Um, you know, like, two dudes with a chick? I, you know, I don't know. It depends. Are they touching each other? It's kind of weird. I wouldn't do that. Uh, Sparklet says, great season once again, Necro. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Also love the Woody Allen impressions. <laughs> oh, thank you. My therapist says I should do that more often. Uh, <laughs> that's just a joke, by the way. Uh, Mr. Lover of God just says, who do you think the most overrated metal band? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, um, I, yeah, when I read that out, it was strange because YouTube has this uh, annoying habit of inserting random question marks when you paste things. Who do you think the most overrated metal band is? Even though I love them, I think Metallica are pretty overrated. No, Metallica are not overrated. If anything, they're underrated because a lot of people have forgotten what legends they are. Uh, most overrated? I mean, it, it would be more along the lines of like crappy bands like Slipknot and Korn. And, well, Korn isn't really metal, but you know, like Slipknot and shit like that that gets mainstream play. They have Grammys. They have loads of fans. I don't understand it because they suck, dude. They suck bad. Um, oh, Vidya Games. Okay, um, let me refresh your guys' memory so this makes a little bit of sense. I did an interview with my friend Joe in the last episode. And uh, while we were while we were talking, um, we were on Skype, and I noticed one of my Skype friends had the name Joe Sucks, and I was like, I, I just pointed it out. I don't think it, you know, it wasn't obviously about him, but I thought it was funny. But uh, Video Game says, ha ha ha, Joe Sucks was me. Definitely not directed at the Joe, who was awesome on the show, by the way. That was my friend Joe talk, taking too long to get on Skype. And me sending a message to him whenever he decided to get on after I left. Anyway, I really like the interview with Joe about the handicapped lady. Really wish I'd watched the video again beforehand. I didn't remember her having cerebral palsy, but I wholeheartedly agree with everything he said. The whole perspective thing. Great episode. Last Exile Zero says, Sorry, man, I was worthless in getting in touch with you over Skype. I hope we can talk in the future and possibly have a chat on the show. Great season. Really pumped for Project Cafe. I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff to talk about when the show comes back. Enjoy the break. I did enjoy the break. Actually, I was wishing I was doing the show. Uh, WWE 12345678900QQA says, For six weeks, I will be sad. Hey, it was only five weeks. Because I got the news on games like GTA and other things I didn't think would be games. So, well, you'll have the news again. Um... <laughs> 13 Duct Tape Ninja 13. I, I talked about a rumor that um, Project Cafe's, uh, the actual name of the console, might be Stream. And he says, We Stream? Yeah, I'm immature. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that Stream thing for a long time. Uh, so maybe it was just a flash in the pan rumor. I think for certain we'll find out at E3 what the name of the console is, or maybe they'll still be calling it Project Cafe. Who knows? But if they're really set to unroll it in 2012, then they'll tell us the name of it. Jazzmaster909 asks, why can't Bobby Prince win a Grammy? Because he steals his songs from everybody else. Have you ever heard the soundtrack to Doom? It's all old metal songs. It's all Metallica and Alice in Chains and Pantera. and I mean, he just changes them just enough that he doesn't have to pay royalties and calls them his own. My friend Joey, uh, no, not to be confused with Joe, but Joey actually put together a compilation uh, called Bobby Prince is a Filthy Thief, which had the Doom songs, Doom and Doom 2, both, side by side with the songs that they directly ripped off. And some of them were very close. Like they, they, He did a version of Alice in Chains' Angry Chair for, I think, Doom 2, and it was like 
it, it was so close. It's a shock he didn't get sued. So that's why Bobby Prince can't win a Grammy. Uh, Monk237 says, Gamma Ray was the best live show I ever saw. Well, good for you. Wonderful. Uh, Splash Fire Zero X says, It sucks that the VMX Season 3 is over. Can't wait for the next season. And by the question about sunshine, I did mean using flood and all that shit. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about because it's been too long. So I'm just going to move on. Dave Korn fans says, Nice season finale. This was the first season I listened to, and it was brilliant. After watching your Lufia 2 playthrough, it gave me an interest in the franchise and was wondering, is the DS remake worth getting? I'm sure I answered him already, but let me uh, talk about that. A lot of people ask me about that since I did the Lufia 2 playthrough. I keep getting the question. I just got it yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, the DS game is good. Um, uh, is it as good as the Super NES game? No, absolutely not. Not even close. It's a completely different style of gameplay. It's more action oriented. Um, it, 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 if you, you know, it, it's hard to describe it. If you've ever played the East games, it's you know like East, but it's sort of not as good as East in a way because of the controls. The controls are not bad, but they're not as good as as e- like for example, I was playing E Seven on the PSP, and then I went kind of directly to Lufia: Curse of the Sinistrals on the DS, and I, I kept getting aggravated that Maxim wasn't as agile. As uh, as Adol was, so it was kind of bugging me. But it is a good game. One, uh, you know, if you're not coming directly from E7, it's even better. So yeah, um, ah, Publius, I'm sorry, Publius Africanus says, love the font. Like I'm about to listen to an old 30s era broadcast. Yeah, I love that old timey shit. That's the one thing I haven't done yet is make a placard for season four. I'll probably work get uh, get Photoshop up and then work on that right after recording this. Um, you know, I'm recording this, you know, in the morning, early afternoon, actually, by now, like I usually do, and it'll be up tonight, so, you know, I have plenty of time. CoolVids19 says, I have an account, three, actually, but I don't have credit card or points card for PSN. Oh, man, the PSN just fully got restored just the other day, and I was I was talking about PSN being down when I last did the show. That shows you how long it was really down. It went through my whole hiatus. Maybe that's why the PSN was down, because I was on hiatus. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, he also said, I almost cried when I didn't see this, but I just missed it. I guess he's talking about the subscription modules. Um, and finally, Jazzmaster909 says, Can you please play some Doom music for the new episode of the VMX show? Why, Bobby Prince again? Well, yeah. Oh, you're the same person, Jazzmaster909. You're really into him, huh? All right, well, you know what? I'll, I'll play that later on in the show if I, if I get the chance. I'll, you know what? I'll play that song that's a direct ripoff of uh, Angry Chair by <laughs> Alice in Chains. So you listen to Angry Chair, and then you listen to that song. It's like, wow, that's the same fucking song. But uh, there you go with the questions and comments. So let's get into the news, huh? Let's bring up my news module. Boop. Okay, let's see. Got a lot of shit to talk about. And in case you're wondering, I'm not doing all the news of the past five weeks. That would be insane. It would take up the whole show. It's just all this is fairly recent news from the last week, like normal. So, uh, I talked a lot last season about the PSP2, which I had uh, taken the habit of calling it the NGP, which stood for Next Generation Portable. Now, a lot of people are still calling it NGP, but recently, recent advertisements that have come out. Uh, or really been leaked out, I guess, because it's kind of sketchy, but it might be called Vita, like as in PS Vita, which makes it sound like it's like a vitamin supplement or a health drink or something. But, um, I mean, even like this one, uh, there's this picture I'm looking at, Honest Goodness PS Vita Original Crisp Bread. Each slice contains, and then it gives like the calories and the sugar and the fiber and shit. And it, it's got, like, a woman's hand holding the, the NGP as if it was, like, a piece of bread. And there's, like, a little bit of food on it. It looks like mashed potatoes and some kind of leafy green vegetable, which, honestly, it looks like clover. Do people eat clover? I doubt it. But, I mean, you know, is it called Vita? Who knows? Who knows? Um, that's just a rumor that's going on. Uh, it might be called Vita. But I've seen a f- more than a few websites referring to it as Vita. We'll talk about Mortal Kombat, uh, Mortal Kombat 9, or just called Mortal Kombat 2011 version. Uh, there's some DLC coming out. Uh, just on Tuesday, 
the seventh, which is two days from now, you'll be getting the um, a big DLC pack for classic costumes and fatalities. It will cost 400 Microsoft points on Xbox Live Arcade and $4.99 on PSN, assuming the PlayStation Store is still working. It's been sort of on and off lately, even though it's supposedly fully restored. It has had a few minor outages. Uh, this includes classic uh, style um, skins, costumes really, for Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Reptile, Ermac, Melina, Jade, and Katana, and classic fatalities for Reptile, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero. Reptile, it's the uh, the head-eating fatality for Mortal Kombat 2. Scorpion will have the toasty fatality for Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. Uh, most of the Mortal Kombats in Sub-Zero will have his classic spine rip fatality. So if you're a big fan of Mortal Kombat, and you're looking to get this. It, it doesn't add anything to the game, really, except for the fatalities. It's mostly cosmetic, but there you go. Speaking of Mortal Kombat DLC, um, and I don't have date or price for this, but the first DLC character, Scarlet, has been announced. And you could watch the trailer and kind of see her uh, in action. She appears to be, like, made out of blood. Like, her, her intro is like there's, like, a big pool of blood on the ground, and then she comes out of the blood and... There's a move where she stabs herself, and then... I don't know, it's, it's just a weird, weird character. Um, uh, probably, uh, they're saying that she'll be released alongside Ken Shi, who was the blind guy uh, from Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and on, but we haven't seen any him in action at all. It's just a trailer, but yeah, no date has been set. We don't know the price, so uh, don't know if you'll be able to buy them separately or if they're a package, who knows. Believe it or not, they're making a movie based on Phoenix Wright, um, but probably only in Japan. Uh, uh, Takashi Nike, uh, he was the director of Ichi the Killer. He's working on a court drama based on a video game, and uh, people have put two and two together and found out that it was Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. It's in production, and it'll be released in Japan spring of next year. That's 2012. So... Uh, you know, who really knows? Uh, <laughs> he, I mean, this is the same guy who did Vampire Girl versus Frankenstein Girl. You know, I mean, his movies are very strange. But um, probably no chance of that coming to American theaters. Probably maybe you can get it on DVD with subtitles or something. But uh, just figured I'd let you guys know they are making a Phoenix Wright movie, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Dragon Age 3 is a thing that's happening, surprising absolutely no one. Um... They're claiming it will fix certain issues that cropped up in Dragon Age 2. Here is a quote from, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Mike Laidlaw. He's the lead designer of Dragon Age 2, and this is what he's saying about the concerns in Dragon Age 2. While I haven't been posting, we have been listening. He posted this on the uh, forum. I'm absolutely aware of the concerns voiced here. Issues like level reuse, the implementation of wave combat, concerns about the narrative, and significance of choice, and so on, have all been not only noted, but examined, inspected, and even aided me and many, many others on the team in formulating future plans. Further, I'm not only aware of these concerns, but I agree that there are aspects of Dragon Age 2 that not only can, but must be improved in future installments. And that is precisely our intent. So, they're going to be unrolling Dragon Age 3. It'll probably be shown at E3. No news as to whether or not it'll be playable. Um, no news on the story or really anything about it, except that there's a logo floating out there that BioWare has indeed officially announced that they are working on Dragon Age 3. Probably have been working on it for some time. Just figured I'd mention it. Let's talk about Zelda. Of course, uh, we know at E3, Nintendo is probably going to show quite a lot of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, but what else are they going to show that's Zelda-related? Last season, I talked a lot about The Legend of Zelda's 25th anniversary and the fact that Nintendo was planning something for it, but we didn't know what, whether it was a game or a collection or what. We might know now. Now, um, there have been some pictures posted on Twitter by um, Masahiro Sakurai. Uh, he made uh, Kirby and Super Smash Brothers. Uh, he's a designer that works for Nintendo. And he shared some pictures of his badge for E3. You could see it's an E3 2011 badge. It says Masahiro Sakurai Project Sora Company Limited. And, uh, but the thing is, it has two straps 
that would, uh, you know, because it's the kind that hang off of your neck. And one strap says the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword with that logo. That's the blue strap. But the white strap says the Legend of Zelda 25th Anniversary, which, you know, makes you think that he's going to be revealing something about it. There's also um, stuff related to Kid Icarus Uprising. We're assuming that he's going to be talking about that at E3. But, interesting, separate logos for... Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword, and Legend of Zelda 25th Anniversary. Now, we don't really know what Nintendo has up its sleeve for Zelda's 25th Anniversary. We will know on Tuesday, probably. But this leads me perfectly into my next news story, which was posted uh, before this and is supposedly unrelated, but honestly, I think they're related. Nintendo might be working on something brand new Zelda related that we didn't know about is the ESRB has given a rating of E with violence as the only descriptive text for a game listed as an online game called Zelda Universe. Is it an MMO? Well, we don't know. Uh, We really don't know anything about it, but it exists because the ESRB The way they work is they don't rate things just for the hell of it. The company has to send them footage of the game for them to rate it, which means it has to be somewhat close to completion. So they've really kept this tight under the radar. But I think that um, at E3, we're going to hear something about something called Zelda Universe and that this is going to be related to the Legend of Zelda 25th anniversary. So... Now, does that mean that it is an MMO? No, it doesn't. But we do know that it is a game that has online capabilities. That could be anything. It could be multiplayer or, or it could be um, social interaction. We don't know what it, it could be level level sharing. Like Mega makes me think of like a Mega Man universe, which got cancelled unfortunately, but it could be anything. So don't make any assumptions, guys. But it's something that exists. It's called Zelda Universe and it's listed as an online game. We don't know if this is for the Wii, the DS, the 3DS, or Project Cafe. My guess, personally, my prediction, is this is going to be something that'll be seen on the 3DS. And the reason I'm thinking 3DS and not Project Cafe is because I'm sure they're still working on the Project Cafe because it's coming out next year. If they have footage to send to ESRB and got a rating, it's too early to be getting ESRB ratings for Project Cafe titles. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is likely going to be something on the 3DS. So there you go. So, you know, we'll be we'll be hearing about that. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm personally going to be watching the uh, the press conference the press event, I should call it, uh, when Nintendo rolls that out of D3, and I'll, that'll definitely be a large part of the news section of next week's show. Uh, let's talk about Castlevania briefly. Uh, more specifically, Castlevania Harmony of Despair, that was the Xbox Live exclusive online game version of Castlevania. Um, It might be coming to the PSN. There's a rumor about it, but nobody really knows anything about how true this is. But it's likely to be announced, yes, say it with me, at E3. All right, I got this next one's kind of funny. Let me talk about Dead or Alive, uh, specifically Dead or Alive Dimensions, which is uh, the newest game in the series that is coming to the 3DS. Now, I have two funny things to talk about. Uh, one is that the ban- the game actually got banned in Sweden, possibly for the dumbest reason I've ever heard. And uh, two is a-, a big news flub from ABC News' website, which is absolutely hilarious. Okay, first off, I want to talk about it being banned. And these, these two stories are related, so stick with me on this. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Dead or Alive... Dimensions did get banned in Sweden, and um, for the dumbest reason, they were saying that this video game, which includes mostly uh, scantily clad girls fighting each other, which is typical for Dead or Alive, uh, they they classify it as child pornography, 
And the reason that they do this is because it ha- there's no nudity in the game. I want to put that right out there. It, it's not even as sexualized as something like uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball for, uh, I think that was original Xbox, or maybe it was the 360. I don't fucking remember. But, um, you know, it's not even like that. It's a, it's a real fighting game. But it has a feature where you can uh, take photos during the gameplay and uh, you know manipulate them. So, yeah, kind of think of Super Smash Brothers uh, Brawl, which had that feature where you can pause the action and take a screenshot of your character, you know, like you know kicking Mario in the head or whatever. And yeah, there were some people that would use it to like look under like Peach's dress or whatever, and you know that that was something that was happening. Or put the characters in you know different compromising uh, poses, like hey, hey, look, it looks like Yoshi's humping Pikachu. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, they're saying that uh, some of the characters in Dead or Alive, uh, specifically referring to Ayane, Kokoro, and Konsumi, are underage. And therefore, if you were to, like, sexualize them or put them in compromising positions, and they're saying that that's porn, and that since they're underage, it's it's illegal. Now, I, I gotta say, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. This is you got to be fucking stupid. Sweden, I am disappointed. I don't know what's going on over there, but they need to get their heads out of their asses. First of all, I want to talk about the fact that this is a video game. That these characters, yeah, they're sexualized, but they're not 18, they're not 16, they're not any age. They're fictional, okay? Let me, let me just get something obvious out of the way. These kind of laws were made for one reason and one reason only. They were made to protect children from being victimized by, you know, having these kind of pictures taken of them. This is a video game. There are no children involved. Nobody's being victimized. And the funniest thing is that in um, in, in a more, um, I, I, you know, I don't even want to say a more sensible country because I'm talking about Australia here. Australia is the com- they're 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 a country that is so insane about violence that they ban Mortal Kombat and and they once banned a game called uh, Getting Up because it they said it glorified graffiti. So, you know, Australia is not really that much better, but they gave Dead or Alive Dimensions a rating of PG. On the other hand, Sweden banned it, saying it was kitty porn. So, you know, and Australia, they're you know they're not exactly the the ones to look up to. Like I said, they they banned a game because they said it glorified graffiti, and that's that's Mar- Mike Echo's getting up. I'm not even talking about like uh, uh, Jet Set Radio, which is not banned in Australia. So uh, you know, okay, so go to the NBC News thing. Um, NBC News ran a story about this. Uh, the headline was typical bullshit. Child porn Nintendo game gets PG rating. Just oh my god, I gotta click this. Think of the children. This is horrible. Well, anyway, the funny thing is they they tried to include a screenshot of the game, including a bunch of characters in bikinis. But instead of using an actual screenshot, they use a doctored screenshot from the website GamesRadar.com, which replaced one of the characters' heads with the head of Ridley from uh, Metroid. So that's... uh, (laughs) So, I mean, can you imagine clicking on this article that says Child Porn Nintendo Game gets PG rating and you click on it and you see like Ridley Ridley's head on a on a on a chick's body in a bikini and and a bunch of other chicks surrounding it. I mean, that's just... You you think, what the hell are they doing over there at Nintendo? Sloppy journalism to be sure, ABC News. I am disappointed. Let's talk about Final Fantasy V. Last season, I talked about the possibility of a redone version of Final Fantasy V coming to PSN. Well, I can tell you now, it is confirmed. The ESRB announced a rating for the PSP and PlayStation 3 version of Final Fantasy V. It will be rated T for mild fantasy violence and partial nudity. Of course, you know, you're not going to be seeing anything, really. Um... That is an unofficial, but it is a confirmation. Now, as for the game being redone, it seems that it's not as redone as we could have hoped. It's not going to be like a high-def version like Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 4 on the PSP were. 
but they're saying it features some new CGI sequences, but is otherwise the Super NES game that uh, has been around. But, you know, but hey, so it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. So, another new version of Final Fantasy V coming out. The last one was on Game Boy Advance, so it's been a while. But I'll talk about, briefly about Batman Arkham City, which is coming out in October, a game that I'm personally looking very much forward to. And uh, as time goes on, we learn more and more about it, and I'm sure we'll learn more about the game at E3. But I can tell you now that Catwoman will be a confirmed playable character in the game. Now, I don't know if this is an alternate mode or if it's part of the story or what, but there is a trailer showing gameplay of Catwoman. So that's really cool. Uh, actually, according to this, she will have her own storyline within the game that will be woven into the main story arc. I should really look at this closely before I put my own foot into my mouth, but yes. She will have her own unique combat moves, gadgets, and signature takedowns, and will be playable in the challenge maps as well. So uh, that's that's out there. You know, That's cool, though. I saw the trailer myself. It looked really cool. It it differentiated it from the uh, the Batman gameplay, so it'll be a nice change of pace. I don't know if it'll, if she'll have some sort of version of detective mode, like in, maybe instead of detective mode, she'll have like cat vision or something that'll show you, you know, different information, not necessarily as much information as detective mode shows you. But you know, there you have it. Here's a ridiculous story. Uh, anybody who's been on Xbox Live and played online with people has probably gotten into arguments with other people or at least witnessed arguments between two people, you know, and it's really, you know, fag, fag, n-word, n-word. That's, that's what it comes down to. But there can be very real consequences. Check this out. Um, one guy, um, a 26-year-old dude uh, in Oregon, we don't know his name, he was on on Xbox Live Arcade, and he was playing um, an indie title called Fortress Craft, and uh, he was playing online, and there was another guy, who we don't know who it is, was um, getting into a big argument about something stupid and small, and, um, you know, this guy, uh, I guess, argued back, held his ground, didn't want to, you know, do whatever the other guy wanted him to do, so this other guy does the most ridiculous and illegal thing I've ever heard happening on Xbox Live Arcade. He makes a prank call to the police saying that uh, he just shot his father and was about to shoot himself and gave the other guy's address. So a SWAT team shows up, you know, to take action. And uh, they call this swatting. Now, this guy in Oregon, um, you're probably wondering, how did the other guy know his address? It turns out he was a hacker. Um, And they found out that several online accounts had been hacked with information including email, addresses, and such things. So be careful who you mess with, and be careful about your information on Xbox Live Arcade, certainly on PSN. You know, um, that's what's going on. I'll tell you a quick story. This is unrelated, but my friend Joey just just recently, like within the past few days, bought a PlayStation 3. And uh, he wanted to get the the Scott Pilgrim game for PSN, and uh, he was looking for PSN cards. He was pissed off that he couldn't find any uh, at a local Walmart, that he had to drive all the way to GameStop to get PSN cards. And I was like, well, two questions. A, why, do you, why don't you know? I know you have a credit card. Well, okay, you know, we know why he didn't want to use the credit card. PSN, he didn't feel safe. So that answered my question already. And I was like, well, why are you buying Scott Pilgrim? You have it for Xbox Live Arcade, but he played it so much that he ruined the X button on his Xbox controller. <laughs> he wanted to play it with a working controller. So, you know, you know, a lot of people have been kind of wary about giving out their credit cards on PSN ever since this whole mess with Anonymous went down. Well, moving on to some good news. Last season, I talked about HD remakes of Resident Evil Code Veronica and Resident Evil 4 coming to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Now, it seems the HD double-pack remake thing is uh, a big hit. And not only is Capcom doing it for Resident Evil, but Konami is uh, getting in on the fun. They are releasing two um, HD, um, sorry, three HD collections, but they're all two packs. One is Metal Gear Solid, another is Silent Hill, and another is Zone of the Enders. 
The Metal Gear Solid collection will include HD remastered versions of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and will also include a bonus Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, which was on the PSP. So you're getting two PS2 games, one PSP game, all remade in HD for PlayStation 3 and uh, possibly also for Xbox 360. Silent Hill will include HD remastered versions of Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3, and Zone of the Enders will include Zone of the Enders and Zone of the Enders, the second runner, all in HD. Um, so, okay, yeah, I don't have any news on the platforms or release dates of Silent Hill, but Metal Gear Solid and Zone of the Enders are confirmed for both PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 will be coming out this winter. So that's kind of a big deal. There you go. For fans of those particular series. And I'm going to say, hey, Konami, don't stop there. Give us HD remakes of Castlevania Lament of Innocence and Castlevania Curse of Darkness. How cool would that be? I'd, I'd, I'd much rather play that than that Metal Gear shit. I don't like Metal Gear. Um, talk about Electronic Arts. I had a lot of EA news stories last year, and unfortunately they weren't all good. I talked a lot about a lot of the nonsense that was going on with EA and and BioWare and and uh, they they weren't they weren't doing well in in uh, the public eye, but some EA classics are coming to GOG.com. If you're unfamiliar with GOG.com, GOG G O G stands for Good Old Games.com, and I got to tell you personally, and I'm not being paid to say this. I wish I was, but I'm not. It's a great website. Uh, you, it's if you want old games for PC. You know, DOS, early Windows, that kind of stuff. You get them that they are uh, retooled to work on modern systems, Windows XP, Vista, and 7, with no DRM, fully downloadable, um, and you get manuals and everything. The copy protection is stripped out. You know, everything is, is there. I've used it to buy uh, some games for Julie. I haven't bought anything for myself, but I bought Julie. All of the old King's Quest games, and that cost me $30. I got eight games for $30, and I also bought her Fallout, um, the original Fallout. That only cost $6. So, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a lot of cool shit going on there. EA has signed a deal with GOG.com to have their old games available on GOG.com. Um... So far, Wing Commander, Privateer, Dungeon Keeper, and Un Ultima Underworld, Ultima Underworld 2 will all be out there for $5.99. And they said um, 20 games will be released by the end of the summer. Um, next three games that uh, just came out because I just got the email about it because I get emails from GOG.com. Crusader No Remorse, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, and Magic Carpet. Actually, is that it? Let me, let me bring up my email here. Because I, I could have sworn there was more than just three. So, uh, live here on the BMX show. Let's see, I see Dungeon Keeper, Ultima Underworld 1, 2. Okay, yeah, that's it. So I can tell you the price. They're all $6. Dungeon Keeper, Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. I guess you get 1 and 2 together for $6. Wing Commander, Privateer, Crusader, No Remorse, Magic Carpet, and Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. All available. five ninety nine each. Looks like the Ultima 1 is... A uh, double pack, and it says, and we're just getting started. Expect over 20 most amazing classics from EA coming to GOG.com later this summer. So that's kind of a big deal from GOG.com. Let's talk about Duke Nukem Forever. It's coming out very soon. It's uh, coming out uh, June 14th. Part of me is still slightly skeptical, but I know it's coming out. The ESRB rated it. It went gold. Uh, my friend Joey got the demo. He played it. So, you know, it's coming out. Now, what if you were one of those people that pre-ordered Duke Nukem Forever at a GameStop or an, or an EB way back in the 1999? Or let's say it was 2001 or, or whatever. Over a decade ago, you pre-ordered Duke Nukem Forever. You put down $5, $10, whatever. Find that pre-order ticket because GameStop has announced that they will honor all pre-orders from their store, of course, for Duke Nukem Forever, regardless of how old they are. Here is a, a, a statement from GameStop. With long-anticipated release like Duke Nukem Forever, we encourage customers who pre-ordered more than a year ago to verify their reservation with their local store prior to launch. 
Provided the customer has a receipt, we will honor even those pre-orders taken long ago. GameStop um, is doing this. I mean, Penny Arcade even kind of poked fun at it with uh, Gabe searching for his pre-order ticket. I mean, I have a picture here. I'm looking at it right now of a GameStop pre-order ticket that was made August 13th, 2001 for Duke Nukem Forever. And this guy put $10 off. And everybody who pre-ordered, including people pre-ordered back in 1999, um, or even 98, I don't know if they were accepting pre-orders in 98 when they announced the game, but um, everybody will get the same package, the Duke's Big Package, which is the game special edition. And uh, I don't know what that includes, actually, off the top of my head, but even if you pre-ordered it back then, before that that uh, announcement was made that they were having this offer, before the offer was in effect, you will get the offer. So that's pretty cool. That is if you've happened to hold on to a slip of paper for 10 years. There's a new Star Trek game coming. Uh, don't know much about it. Hopefully we'll hear something at E3, but it's based on the J.J. Abrams uh, universe that was created with the 2009 Star Trek reboot movie. It will apparently be a follow-up to the movie and so far is just called Star Trek. So no news yet on uh, what systems it's coming out for. Oh, actually I do. It says uh, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. Um, Supposedly will be coming out summer of 2012. So there's that. Um, but yeah, it's being made by Digital Extremes. They made The Darkness and The Darkness 2. So there's that. If you like those games and you like Star Trek, that might be pretty big news. Um, Skyrim is coming out in November, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And if you're in Los Angeles, you might be very, very aware of it as three huge banners making up one very, very, very big promotional image for Skyrim was put up on the Hotel Figueroa in um, in Los Angeles. I mean, let me look at, let me, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 stories tall, actually a little little more than that because it goes all the way to the, the roof almost. So over 12 stories tall, it's the biggest fucking poster for a video game I've ever seen. I saw this on... Uh, on Facebook because I uh, subscribe to the Elder Scrolls on Facebook. If you want to see this image, go to twitpick.com slash 55LHQH, all lowercase. twitpick.com slash 55LHQH to see this. It's absolutely amazing. Or if you're in Los Angeles, just drive by the Hotel Figueroa and you'll see the biggest advertisement for a video game I've ever seen. As if I wasn't already excited. For my final news story, this I could tell this uh, show is running a little long, but oh well, season premiere, why not? I have some unfortunate news for 3DS owners. Well, good news, but tinged with a little bit of unfortunate news. They ha- they're having a big global system update for the Nintendo 3DS, which will add the eShop and Internet browser, but you will be able now to transfer the games that you purchase for DSiWare to the Nintendo 3DS. That sounds pretty cool, but here comes the unfortunate part. For no specific reason, certain titles that uh, were for DSiWare will not transfer to the Nintendo 3DS. I'm going to tell you what those titles... There's 19 of them, and I'm going to tell you what they are in a minute, but I want to let you know that there's no reason given why these games won't transfer or work on the Nintendo 3DS. And it's possible that there'll be a patch or an update sometime in the future that will fix this, but we really don't know anything about it. So the the games are Art Academy first semester, Art Academy second semester, Asphalt 4, Crash Course Domo, Earthworm Jim, Flipnote Studio, Hard Hat Domo, Let's Golf, Nintendo DSi Browser, that's an obvious one because you want to use the 3DS browser, Oregon Trail, Pinball, per, uh, Pinball Pulse, The Ancients Beckon, Pro Putt Domo, Real Soccer 2009, Real Soccer 2010, Rock and Roll Domo, Sudoku Master, Sudoku Sensei, Sudoku Student, and White Water Domo. Um, many of the DSiWare titles will be made available through the 3DS eShop. Keep in mind that your points for the, for the DSi or the Wii will only work on those systems. The 3DS eShop will not have points. It will only deal in actual money, much like, uh, say, for example, 
the PSN. So, that's it for the news. Let's get Charmaine in here. Uh, Charmaine came by earlier to talk about stuff. Let's get her in here and get that over with. So, here's the interview. Charmaine to the show. How you doing, Charmaine? Pretty good. You're the first guest on season four. How's that feel? That's awesome. Are you pumped? Hello? Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I guess you're not that pumped. Okay, so uh, what what brings you to the show today? Um, well, I've just been a fan of your videos and stuff for a while, and, uh... I just really enjoyed uh, your Final Fantasy uh, history of playlists. That was great. I, I really had a lot of fun making that. Yeah, and and also the myths of video gaming and stuff yeah. like that. That's probably my <laughs> most popular thing right now. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry, you seen... you huh? I'm sorry. Say that again. I was talking. Oh, say that again. I, oh, I was gonna say. Uh, I noticed that you haven't really had a lot of girls on the show, so... Yeah, yeah. one or two, but not not a lot. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, my, my viewership is like 90% male as it is. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, that probably is why. I mean, the very first show I ever did, I had a girl on, but um, she's been busy and whatnot, so she hasn't had the chance to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me what. Tell me about your channel. Why don't you uh, take the ch this chance to plug your channel? <laughs> okay. Um, well, my channel. Um, my username is chibiko7, um, and basically, it's just random little vlog videos. I haven't made a video in a really long time, um, but yeah, it's basically just me hanging out with my friends and. Stuff. It's nothing really like video game related, but I definitely right. want to do some like let's plays and stuff like that. And if you're you're gonna get into that, what would be your first choice for a let's play? Probably Final Fantasy IX. That's a long one too. Yeah, it would take a while, but I think it would be really fun. So. Well, I would watch it. <laughs> Thanks. At least you'd have one viewer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you were telling me yesterday, because we were talking yesterday, that you don't really have any of the modern systems. Yeah. Like the Wii, the PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360. Are you planning on getting any of them? Um, yeah, actually, I'm planning on getting the PlayStation 3 and the 3DS, but I'm just not sure about anything else, though. I'm probably going to get a PC, too, because, I, as you know, I have a Mac. Yes. And... There aren't really a lot of games that come out for Mac, so... Not a lot at all. I mean, like I, I was just saying earlier how... It's weird how the, the original Bioshock came out for Mac, but the sequel was not out for Mac. Yeah, that's really bizarre. Or maybe maybe it wasn't a big seller. Yeah, maybe. What games are you looking forward to? Like, say you get the PlayStation 3, you get the 3DS. What were you planning on buying? Um, well, for the PlayStation 3, I really wanted to get uh, Final Fantasy XIII, obviously, because... That was a good game. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
for the 3DS, I'm really looking forward to the Ocarina of Time remake. Oh, that's remake. pretty soon. Yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. Pretty and soon. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I also want to get a Wii. Just oh, you didn't say like, that, yeah. Uh, and what, what are you uh, looking to get on the Wii? Um... Um, not sure, huh? I'm not really sure. It's just I've played I've played Wii's at my other friends' houses, and they just seem really fun and cool and stuff. It's it's a neat little system. I mean, I have a lot of games for it that are really cool. Yeah. And uh, you get access to a lot of cool stuff like the virtual console and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah, really great that. for someone who has a Mac, which doesn't exactly have all the best emulators on it. Yeah, that's for sure. So you could definitely, you know, mm-hmm. go more into the classic gaming. Now, uh, tell me about how you got into video games. Like, what was the first game you ever played? Um, first game I ever played, um, I'm pretty sure that it was Sonic, Sonic 2 on Sega Genesis. Wow, okay. You must, I know you're young, so you must have been pretty young when you played that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was obsessed with Sonic and everything and How the Mighty yeah. Have Fallen. Huh? How the Mighty Have Fallen. Yeah. I'm talking about Sonic. It's pretty sad. He's Poor kind Sonic. Of a joke now. <laughs> and every time a new Sonic kind of, let me let me ask you if you agree with this, because I, I have experienced this. Isn't it every single time a new Sonic game comes out, it's always like this is going to be the one that revives it all. This is a return to form. This is awesome. Uh-huh. This is old school. And then you play it, it's like, eh. Eh. <laughs> you mean, do, you, do you get that experience, too? Yeah, I mean, I haven't really been playing a lot of the new Sonic games, but just from seeing the trailers, I just think they're ridiculous. I don't even want to try A little bit creepy. I want to, like, preserve my... My, uh, you know, Your image of Sonic, Sonic, right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's long gone for me. <laughs> long gone. Oh man, long, long time ago. Oh. I think uh, right around when Sonic Adventure Two came out, I was like, well, "This is a good game, but what is going on with this storyline?" Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason the Mario is doing so well now is because you know they haven't really really gone into fleshing out the characters and giving them, like, motivations and reasons why they're doing things. And it's yeah, just exactly. all about the gameplay. And I think that's what they should have done with Sonic. Here's all the motivations you need. Bowser kidnaps the princess because he's a jerk. <laughs> the princess always gets kidnapped because she's dumb. Yep. And Mario always rescues her because he's the good guy. That's all the motivations you need for a, an action game, anyway. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I love I love games with a strong story, but if you're not going to do a strong story, don't do a story. Exactly. Just, you know. I mean, I remember um, you had to read the manuals to get stories back in the day. I mean, you didn't know anything about the story if you just put a game in your, in your NES and just started playing it. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't really that necessary. It was almost like the story in, like, a porno. Like, it's there, but you don't really need it. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't even think that Sonic 2 really had a story. You just kind of, you know, kind of... Well, it, it was the typical it Sega Genesis thing, you know, Dr. Robotnik turning robots into machines. Sonic's got to run really fast. Yeah. Really uh, uh, yeah. And they have tails, you know. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, I, okay, so you got you got into it. You got into oh. it around the 16-bit era, you say. Have you ever played any of the older games, like NES and whatnot? Um, well, no. The, the furthest back I've ever gone is, like, SNES. So okay. that's, like... So I've played this, Chrono, Chrono Trigger. I've been playing yeah. that recently. Well, that's a really great game. Yeah. So you haven't really gone further back than that. So it seems to me you got to like expand a little bit because you've yeah. only gone as far back as 16-bit. Yeah, I really you... want to. It's just yeah, and you don't have the newer system, so it's time to <laughs> time to get more into it, right? Yeah, that's for sure. Um, but I made a list here of um, some games that I'm really, really, really wanting. Um, okay, let's hear this list. 
Yeah, and keep in mind, I have a PlayStation 2 yeah. and, you know, a DS, yes. like DS Lite, and... Yeah. That's the same DS I have. Yeah. But anyway, um... Okay, the first one I have written down here is Final Fantasy IX, obviously, because I want to do a playthrough of that, and it's just an o- it's just an overall awesome game. That's true. Yeah, and then I wrote down Chrono Cross because you were telling me about that yesterday. Yes, sounded really if, cool. If you liked Chrono Trigger, you would definitely like Chrono Cross. A lot of people felt that it wasn't as good. Yeah. I thought it was better personally. Yeah. And the next one I have on my list is Silent Hill 3, because I I kind of want to get into Silent Hill, because it just, it seems really cool, and like... Well, why not start with the first one? Well, I guess I could, now that yeah. I think about it. Because most people, I, told, I don't, I'm not into that particular series, but I know a few people who were, and they said that the first two were really the good ones. Oh, Wow. Of course, I've heard that they're unbelievably scary, too. I, I, I haven't experienced it firsthand, but I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, my friend Joey knows a guy mm-hmm. who made a very grave error in that he decided to do acid and then play Silent Hill while he was tripping out, which is not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And he the guy doesn't remember anything from from it but if you play the air rides the air raid siren sound he starts screaming <laughs> he doesn't even know why but that sound just scares the pants off of him and he just starts screaming and of course joey would call him up and start playing the sound just to hear him scream yeah i i think it's because like when the sirens go off in silent hill like it's because the monsters come out or something yeah exactly yeah. and that's probably way scarier if you're strung out on drugs yeah. So. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't do that. I definitely. Yeah, you do, drugs and video games don't mix. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Drugs and me don't mix. So. Well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I. I would never do acid myself. But, <laughs> well, that's know. good to know. Anyway, not, um, since right now we're playing uh, Final Fantasy XII, um, right, right. after I beat Final Fantasy XII. I um, I want to get Reverend Wings for the DS. Yes. I've heard it, like, continues the story and stuff. And it sure does. So, yeah. That one's more of a real-time strategy. Have you played any real-time strategy games before? Uh, yeah, I played uh, the first uh, Final Fantasy Tactics for PlayStation. Well, that's, that's actually turn-based strategy, which is a, a little bit different. Because it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like an RPG where you have time to make your decisions and everything. Yeah. But uh, Revenant Wings is a real-time strategy, which means everything is happening real-time. So as you're, you know, putting your units together and positioning everything and making your decisions, the enemies are attacking you the whole time. So you have to make quick decisions. Oh, wow. wow. That's so it's a, it's a little bit more fast-paced. Yeah, that's like one thing that I didn't really. I mean, I loved Final Fantasy Tactics. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it was just kind of. I kind of wanted it to be faster paced, like with the fighting stuff. Well, you know, it, you know, real time strategy is a very cerebral thing. I, I personally prefer real time. Uh, I'm sorry, personally prefer the turn based strategy. Yeah, because you do have the time to plan everything out. But there is something to be said for that action that you get with a real time game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the next, the last thing I have on my list is uh, American McGee's Alice, like the second one and the first one, because I, I played part of the first one on um, my That was a very own. underrated game, too. Yeah, I think it's because a lot of people were like, oh, oh okay, it's just like a, a gothic version of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Well, actually, it's really, really cool. And the st- well, I think a lot of people didn't know who American McGee was and why he had his name on it like that. Yeah. But he was one of the designers on, like, Doom. So the guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know but, he was uh, one of the designers for Doom. But Yeah, he worked for id Software. I think a part of the problem was that um, American McGee's Alice was a PC exclusive. It never came to any console. Yeah. Which was kind of strange, because at the time, it, it would have fit in really well on, like, PlayStation 1 or, or N64. Exactly. 
Yeah. But it just never happened. But from what I understand, uh, this new one, which is available for consoles as well as PC, mm-hmm. um, you get the original game. That's awesome. Which That's really cool. awesome. That's I really hope Alice that the Madness that. returns. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, you were t- mm-hmm. thinking about maybe getting a Wii, you said. Yeah. Now, um, in just a few days, we're going to have the big gaming event of the year, the E3, Electronic Entertainment Expo. Mm-hmm. And everybody is expecting Nintendo to announce their next console. And we don't really know anything about it other than it has a code name, Project Cafe. But okay. <laughs> we, you know how it is. They have those those names, and then later on they change it. Like, I think the Wii was originally called uh, Revolution. Yeah. So, you know, they, they do change it. It won't be called that, but that's what it's called right now. Mm-hmm. But, um... We don't really know anything. I mean, there's been a lot of rumors about the features and, and what what kind of graphics and what kind of uh, controller they're going to have. But one thing that is expected is mm-hmm. that it will be backwards compatible, that it will play the Wii games. Oh, okay. Would well, that you would... hold off and get the new console, or would you get the Wii? That's kind of a hard question, and... There's no, there's really no wrong answer too, because it, I mean, obviously, if you get the new console, you're getting something new with, you know, more horsepower, newer games, and everything. But the old one will obviously be cheaper. Yeah. yeah. But one thing that I'm interested in is like, if the next console after the Wii, if it's not only going to be compatible for Wii games, but also, you know, for Game GameCube games. That's also a concern for me because, as you might know from viewing my channel, I have a very, very extensive collection of GameCube games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And although I still have my GameCube, it's very convenient to be able to play them on the Wii with no hassle. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, Nintendo's been iffy about backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, the Game Boy Advance had it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the DS played Game Boy Advance games, but it wouldn't go any further back than that. It, well, you couldn't play Game Boy Color games or Game Boy yeah. games. Yeah. And then they took that feature out of the DS completely. Yeah. That's and why the 3DS will play... Yeah, why? the 3DS will play DS games, but not Game Boy games. So it's, it's, yeah. they've been iffy yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. And like, the Wii plays also, GameCube, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm curious also about that. Yeah, and also, like... Um, with the 3DS and everything, I'm not even mm-hmm. sure if I want to, like, trade in or, like, get rid of my DS Lite because I don't have, like, a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance right now or Game Boy Color or anything like that. Cause yeah, that, pretty that's much exactly almost, how I feel. Yeah. I don't because I play, I play the Game Boy Advance games on the DS. Yeah. Because yeah. let me tell you, I, I and, and this is going to sound funny at first, but... Uh, Stick with me, people. I hate the Game Boy Advance. Why do you I really hate do. I, I hate that damn thing. Because it has such great games. But first I got the, the original one, and it's like it has no light whatsoever. Oh, you yeah. You have to be playing with the, the light sh- shining, you know, in the perfect spot on it to be able to see anything. And yeah. then they had the, the one that did have the light, but it didn't have a headphone jack. Yeah. And then they had the one that has the light and the headphone jack, but it's so small <laughs> that I, I feel like I'm going to crush it in my hand. <laughs> the Game Boy Micro. So I never even got that. Yeah, I never checked that out either. And I got the Game Boy Player, which was that thing that you put on the bottom of your GameCube and you could play the games on your TV. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And that's great, except it's not portable. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, so, I guess know, they I mean, weren't really you know. thinking about it when they came up with all this Oh, stuff. boy, here we go with the phone in the middle of an interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm turning the ringer off, and I'm going to call her back later. It's my sister. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I, I hated the whole concept of the only viable way to play Game Boy Advance games with a lot of light and all the features that I wanted was on the TV. Yeah. So the DS is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would I would keep my DS Lite. The problem with my DS Lite is that it's the the latch on it is is like on the verge of breaking, so I have to be very gentle with it. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, my sister, um, she she has her DS, and it's, like, really, really messed up. Like, she, she told me somebody accidentally sat on it when she was at school or something. What? Like, oh, at man. class or something. That's, sat on that's it. pretty, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I have a friend, Brandy, she, she had to buy the 3DS recently mm-hmm. because she had the old DS, the fat one. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. And her kid broke it. <laughs> she has like a like a like a toddler that broke the thing completely. I don't see how how can kids break video games? I've never understood that. Like like the systems, not the games, like the actual games, like the systems. You've never does... been witness to the destructive force of a toddler, have you? No. <laughs> no, that's that's the answer to your question. They can destroy anything they get their hands on. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I, I haven't had to deal with that yet. <laughs> <laughs> One day, right? Uh, yeah. When you get the, the not. kid, just keep the video games, the controllers especially, away from them. Yeah. Yeah. Because they like to smash and throw, and you know, and the DS is a delicate thing as it is. Yeah. Especially when you oh, have two screens that can break. Another system I was thinking about getting is the PSP. I love the PSP. A lot of people give it a bad rap, but I, I think it's a great system. Yeah. yeah. And what are you interested in the PSP? Well, like, you know how I was going to get Final Fantasy IX? Like, I was yeah. able to just play it on my PS2? Yeah, well, you can get it on Yeah, PSP, I was thinking so. of just getting it on my PSP when I get one, so that I can... It's, it's just going to be better and easier for me to play it, because... You know, I'm going to be out and about all the time, and I could just, you know, whip out my PSP and start playing it instead of having to go... And you know what's, you know what's really great about the PSP for portability? I mean, you know, obviously I've played a lot of portable systems, but I like one thing I like about the PSP is that at any point, mm-hmm. you can turn it off. And then when you turn it on, your game is exactly where you were before. That's awesome. So, so even if your battery dies... Yeah, even if the battery dies, it, it does... I mean, I, I guess maybe if it dies completely, you might lose your progress. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I've never had that happen, because it, it does warn you well in advance when your battery's low. That's awesome. That sounds really awesome. I mean, I, I you know, like I said, a lot of people... And <laughs> we were talking about Final Fantasy Tactics. There's a <laughs> remake of Final Fantasy Tactics on the PSP mm-hmm. called uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, The War of the Lions... Mm-hmm. And it's basically the same game, except they took out those really awkward 3D scenes and they put in, like, animated scenes instead. Oh, that and sounds they, cool. And uh, they retranslated it so that it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. yeah. It has That's a few cool. extra features, but I, I, it's the definitive version. And also, I was telling you when you were telling me earlier, or yesterday, I should say, about ta- Final Fantasy Tactics and how much you like that, you should definitely look into the Tactics Ogre series. Mm-hmm. And the the, the the one that was called uh, "Let Us Cling Together" recently also got a remake on PSP. If you like role playing games, the PSP is like the system to have. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Because you got, I mean, you got Final Fantasy, you got mm-hmm. um, East, you got um, Lunar, and you got a whole bunch of different series on there. Is, so there's this. Is any of the Mana games on there like? No, they haven't. You know what? I don't. You know the Mana games. That's an interesting one because they really haven't done like a like a big new one in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think the last one was Children of Mana or something on the DS. I think the last one that I played was on PlayStation, like PlayStation One. It was just oh, Legend of Mana. Yeah, I loved yeah. that game so much. I just I know there's at least one on the DS. I think it's called Children of Mon. I'm not a big fan of that series, personally. I like the very first one, mm-hmm. the one that was on Game Boy. Yeah, I never played that. Which was called that. Final Fantasy Adventure, but, um... Yeah, after that, I, I don't know. Like, Secret of Mana, a lot of people really like that for Super NES, but that game pisses me off. <laughs> I don't know why, it just makes me angry. <laughs> but, yeah, like, in your, um, in your playlist about Final Fantasy, like, mm-hmm. I was pretty shocked to find out that you know, they changed the names of, like, different games and tried to pass them off as Final oh, Fantasy yeah. and they weren't, and it's, like, so Like weird. Saga and, and the it's Mana like, series. Yeah. It's like they weren't thinking... It's like they were thinking that everybody wouldn't find out eventually. Well, at the time, nobody did because there really wasn't an internet. 
Yeah. But, um, you know what it was is that in America especially, RPGs didn't sell a lot. Mm -hmm. And Final Fantasy was one of the few games that was like a major hit here. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, well, let's try and piggyback on that. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you still see it in other series, too. Like, um, there's a game for the original NES called Street Fighter 2010. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with Street Fighter. Oh, wow. As a matter, and in Japan, it's not even called that. It's called something completely different. Wow. wow. So, I mean, you see that a lot. They try and tack on a brand. You can't get get away with it now because everybody has the internet and everybody finds out anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's been great having you on the show. Well, I had a great time. Thanks for inviting me on the show. We'll have to have you on again in a future season, assuming the world doesn't end, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and we'll get back to the show then. All right, bye. Coming up soon. back to WVMX Radio. That was Alice in Chains with Angry Ch Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. This is not WVMX Radio. It's the VMX Show. And that was not Alice in Chains' Angry Chair. It was Adrian's Asleep from the Doom 2 soundtrack. Damn you, Bobby Prince. You filthy thief. Uh, all in good kidding. Uh, all, all in good fun. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, let's get... Uh, this This show's already gone long. Um, remember when the show used to be, like, an hour long? <laughs> now it's so much longer. But um, <clears throat> let's uh, let's get this done, huh? Well, so we got the sales figures. I'll get through that, and then I'll give you the releases for June. Nothing's come out in June so far since the first games start coming out on the seventh. So at least there's that. But let's talk about the um, the sales figures for the week ending in May twenty eighth. In America, the top selling game was L.A. Noir for Xbox three sixty, sold two hundred and thirty seven thousand three hundred copies. And number two, L.A. Noir for PlayStation 3 sold 169,412 copies. And number three, Wii Sports Resort for the Wii sold 73,487 copies. At number four, NASCAR 2011 The Game for the Wii sold 70,855 copies. And at number five, Wii Sports for the Wii sold 66,403 copies. And number six, Wii Mario Kart Wii making a big comeback there, huh? Mario Kart Wii for the Wii sold 58,973 copies. At number 7, Zumba Fitness for the Wii sold 38,575 copies. At number 8, Connect Adventures for Xbox 360 sold 35,404 copies. At number 9, Wii Fit Plus for the Wii sold 34,511 copies. And at number 10, Mortal Kombat for the PlayStation 3 sold 34,288 copies. In Japan, the top-selling game was One Piece Unlimited Cruise SP for the 3DS. It sold 81,104 copies. And number two, Troy Musou for PlayStation 3 sold 32,930 copies. And number three, Pandora no Tu Kimi no Moto Ikeru 
Something about frogs, I guess. For the Wii, it sold 22,569 copies. And number four, Akiba's Trip for PlayStation Portable sold 17,490 copies. And number five, Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 Professional for the DS sold 15,738 copies. And number six, Nobunga no Yabo Tendo with Power Up Kit for the PlayStation 3 sold 15,337 copies. And number seven, Treasure Report Kikai Jikeki no Isan. That's on the... Uh, Damn with these names. Now that's on the DS, and it sold 14,403 copies. And number eight, Iza Satsujin Koizen for the PlayStation Portable sold 10,055 copies. At number nine, Patapon 3 for PlayStation Portable sold 9,049 copies. And at number ten, Pro Yaku Spirits 2011 for the PlayStation Portable sold 8,784 copies. In Europe... The top-selling game was L.A. Noir for PlayStation 3. It sold 215,801 copies. L.A. Noir for the Xbox 360 sold 171,521 copies. Wii Sports Resort for the Wii sold 72,280 copies. Dirt 3 for PlayStation 3 sold 70,392 copies. Dirt 3 for Xbox 360 sold 69,846 copies. Wii Sports for the Wii sold 65,713 copies. The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings for the PC sold 62,449 copies. Mario Kart Wii for the Wii sold 48,060 copies. Zumba Fitness for the Wii sold 35,320 copies. And Pokemon Black and White for the DS sold 34,706 copies. So worldwide, the top 10 best-selling games are L.A. Noir on 360, L.A. Noir on PS3, Wii Sports Resort, Wii Sports, Mario Kart Wii, Dirt 3 for 360, Dirt 3 for PS3, Witcher 2, One Piece Unlimited, Cruise Ship SP, uh, I'm sorry, not Cruise Ship, why did I say Cruise Ship, One Piece Unlimited, Cruise SP, and Zumba Fitness on the Wii. Let's get to hardware charts. In America, the top-selling console was the Wii, with 105,952 units sold. Uh, the Xbox 360 moved 72,239 units. The PlayStation 3 moved 51,875 units. The DS moved 50,078 units. The 3DS moved 31,941 units. And the PSP moved 18,803 units. In Japan, the top, uh, top best-selling system was the PlayStation Portable, PSP, which moved 33,138 units. The 3DS moved 23,712 units. The PS3 moved 15,901 units. The DS, 8,791 units. The Wii, 7,441 units. And the Xbox 360, 2,123 units. <coughs> In Europe, the top-selling system was the Wii, with 98,134 units. The PS3 sold 66,749 units. The Xbox 360, 46,735 units. The DS, 42,713 units. The PSP, 34,912 units. And the 3DS, 29,652 units. So worldwide, it was the Wii, followed by PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, DS, PSP, and 3DS. So that's what's going on in sales. Let's tell you what's coming out in the rest of June. On Tuesday, the 7th, we'll have see the release of Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion on the 3DS, Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii, PlayStation Portable, the DS, and the 3DS, Infamous 2 will hit PlayStation 3, Operation Flashpoint Red River will hit Xbox 360, <coughs> Windows, and PlayStation 3, and Red Faction Armageddon will hit the Wii. On the 13th, Wii Play Motion will be coming out for the Wii. On the 14th, Alice Madness Returns will be coming out for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Windows. Child of Eden will be coming for the Xbox 360. Duke Nukem Forever for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Windows. And Transformers Dark of the Moon for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, and the DS. <coughs> On the 16th, we'll see the release of Dawn of Fantasy for Windows. On the 19th, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D will be hitting the 3DS. On the 21st, uh, 21st, I don't know what I was trying to say there. On the 21st, a couple of games, Fear 3 for Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Dungeon Siege 3 for Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Shadows of the Damned for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell compilation for PlayStation 3. And in case you're wondering what's in that compilation, um, 
I don't actually know, so I can't tell you. <laughs> I think that's uh, it's it's the first three games actually. So there you have it. And finally, on the 28th, Call of Juarez, the cartel, will be coming for Windows, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. Dynasty Warriors, Warriors Gundam 3 will be coming for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And Sniper Ghost Warrior will be coming for PlayStation 3. E3 is this week. Big, exciting news coming out. That's the show. Necro VMX out. We'll see you next week.